Um, I'm curious to get your input on um, some of the drivers in this region, uh, the historical drivers, the federal government, law firms, nonprofits. What are your thoughts in terms of uh, those office space users and um, their outlook uh, going forward? I think we're uh, not really different from perhaps a lot of other parts of the country at this point in time where there's a lot of uncertainty just in the overall economy. And that clearly has had an impact uh, on office space demand. So in terms of office uses, uh, there really has been a fairly dramatic slowdown in the absorption of office space. Uh, there's a lot of discussion and study that has been occurring to see how much uh, pent-up demand perhaps is occurring. But I think generally the level of confidence in the overall economy is really going to drive sort of the business sector and its, and its demand for space. And until there's more confidence in job creation, we expect, at least on the office sector, that there is going to be continued sort of slow growth. Uh, and as a result, uh, if you look around, there really aren't that many new office building starts. We don't see anything dramatic happening in the, in the near term. Um, we certainly all hope in the medium term that we can see, we can get back to more uh, historic levels of absorption, which would be good for the office sector. Uh, with regard to other sectors, though, uh, residential, the multifamily market has been extremely vibrant um, in pretty much the entire area. But again, a lot of it is more urban focused, more transit oriented. And there are some demographic shifts that are occurring. For instance, the District of Columbia proper is seeing an inward migration, an increase in the population. I think they've, they've increased almost close to 50,000 residents uh, over, the, I think, the last five years. So there's been a, a big increase in the desirability of living in D.C., which has allowed for there to be some rejuvenation in some areas and, uh, of the city. The U Street Corridor uh, comes to mind as one area. So we've, we've been very active in those markets. And it's really a very exciting time for the city to see that kind of change occurring in the city. And we think it is something that is going to continue um, not only in D.C. proper, but in the, in the closer in Maryland and Virginia suburbs uh, in our market. Like anything, when it becomes very popular, you, you start uh, looking at uh, the potential to oversupply. We don't think we're there now in general, but we, we see some warning signs that if the amount of multifamily product that is being planned and talked about uh, delivering, in fact, does start delivering, absent some significant growth in the economy, we could be in a position where we would have some, some oversupply. And, and retail seems to continue to sort of just going through our asset classes. Retail continues to sort of hum along uh, in, in many areas. And uh, within DC proper, um, if you look at any of the ratios, it's actually still very under-retailed in terms of sort of square feet per resident uh, compared to other markets. But we're very selective about that. We really view the, the retail in many of our projects uh, as an amenity that is going to help drive sort of the other uses uh, in the project as well. So um, we love bringing food stores in when we can bring food stores in. We love um, you know, bringing sort of that amenity base. Um, you get food stores, health clubs, restaurants, uh, things that people working, living there want to see. So those are wonderful things that we think, uh, we spend a lot of time focusing on that and relationships with the different companies that offer those, those types of uses um, because we know what an impact they can have on our project. And, and hotels are the last asset class in hotels. Um, we, we try to be very selective. We're the largest uh, hotel owner in the Washington metropolitan area. Uh, some days that feels good, some days it maybe doesn't feel as good as others uh, <laughs> um, because it is uh, very uh, directly correlated to sort of how the economy is doing. Uh, and, uh, but long, long term, we feel, we feel very, uh, very bullish and very strong on that. Uh, D.C. is a, a wonderful city where um, a lot of people want to come for, you know, the seat of power is here. I mean, all of the advantages of being in the nation's capital are something that we think are enduring in the, over the long run. Um, you know, make it a wonderful place also to, to live in, and work. Um, so uh, Rod and I have been here for a long time now, and uh, I don't think either one of us has plans to go anywhere anytime soon. So. <laughs> sure, just a couple more, a uh, couple of notes on the office side. You know, we're, we're, you look at the law firms and, and the government and a lot of uh, private sector tenants, everybody's trying to get more fish, efficient with the space needs today, and so we're seeing uh, space efficiency go up considerably, which means a, a corresponding drop in the amount of space that they, they need. And so you know, tenants are having to, you know, moved into different buildings to be able to accommodate this new space plan that where they're packing in a number of, number of uh, uh, people in this space. And, you know, you've got firms like Accenture going down to 
100,000 square feet from uh, 200 that they had before, and you have the federal government giving back uh, a lot of space and, and putting a lot of a lot more people in that space. So it's it's having an impact on the uh, the office market, you know, especially given that there's not a lot of job growth. So it's it's really had a negative impact, and, and we really are trying to get creative on trying on how to accommodate those needs in new buildings or retrofitted old buildings. And that was two topics today in, in the conference. Uh, you know, building the office building of the future, uh, the 2020 plan, which is really interesting, and then uh, retrofitting old buildings. And so I think those are you know, great programs for, for NAMP to have, and it's very timely. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for spending some time with me today. I really appreciate your time and your comments. And again, congratulations on the Developer of the Year designation. Well, thank you very thank you. much.